We are excited as we count down the days and make our way to, to Pittsburgh and look forward to seeing many of you there. Uh, what I want to do is spend some time talking about the business that comes before the assembly and how it comes before the assembly and what you have what opportunities you will have to engage when when you get to Pittsburgh. Uh, <clears throat> good. <laughs> Great. So basically there are four ways that business comes to an assembly. It begins um, uh, we're having a little difficulty making sure everything moves forward. There you go. Uh, overtures is the most popular way for business to come before the assembly. Overtures begin most often in sessions, small churches, large churches, uh, teaching and ruling elders who are together looking at and considering the work of the church and some voice of importance of the ministry that they want to bring before the, the national church and the General Assembly. The Constitution says that it is the responsibility of presbyteries and synods to bring business before the assembly. And they do this with these overtures that sometimes come as voices from congregations, sometimes from synods and presbyteries themselves. But these provide the, 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 a vision and a voice for the whole church at the assembly. This year, the 115 overtures coming before the assembly. As you can see, they fall down to certain broad categories. The largest number of overtures, in fact, have to do with marriage issues. Another large number, this assembly, as in every assembly recently, have, are about the ordination standards. Um, unique to this assembly are a number of overtures about presbytery and synod boundaries and specific overtures about eliminating synods or keeping synods in response to the Commission on Mid-Councils report. Also in response to the report of MILT, um, there will be a, there's a number of overtures about the Middle East. There are some that come in response to the new form of government, which was passed by the last assembly. There are several as well on immigration issues in response to the action of the last assembly. And in response to a report of the Special Offerings Task Force of the General Assembly Mission Council, um, several presbyteries wish to speak about that Special Offerings report. Finally, some about church property. But you can see that uh, a large number fit into that just other category, everything from uh, moving some churches, from some congregations from one presbytery to another, or some special uh, uh, passion of a presbytery or a congregation about mission or about some specific, specific program. The second source of business is referrals, because often a general assembly will have a piece of business that it doesn't feel it is able at that point to um, to, to respond to, and so instead it refers that on to a special committee, a commission, or a task force. There's some of the largest items of business that will be coming for this assembly are referrals from previous assemblies. The Heidelberg Catechism, which was a, which was a referral two assemblies ago, that came back to the last assembly as they asked to be reconstituted to look not just at the five questions of their original mandate, but at the whole catechism and are coming back now and encouraging the denomination to join with several other um, North American Reformed denominations and an entirely new translation of the Heidelberg Catechism. The, the large report from the Mid-Council Commission comes back as a referral from the last assembly. Um, the last assembly also set up a task force to consider for us what the church would be in the 21st century, and they bring back a smorgasbord of recommendations and um, some sense of vision for the assembly to consider. And finally, the Biennial Review Committee, which was mandated by the last assembly, but has been expanded in its mandate to consider not just the question of biennial assemblies, but of the nature and function of the assembly itself. The third source of the business are reports. Um, what would we be if we were not a people of hearing reports? Reports from all six agencies, from many of the 
uh, work groups and the task forces of those agencies will all come before us. But also some regular reports of special committees. Last Assembly, for instance, created a monitoring group to just simply bring back a report about um, the our actions concerning middle, the Middle East and how we have you know, how the church and the Middle East have experienced our cooperation together. The last assembly instructed the Board of Pensions to consider what it would mean to offer benefits to same gendered couples and to bring back a report and a recommendation to this assembly. Um, the last assembly recognized that with the form with a new form of government, some authoritative interpretations would no longer be uh, linked to any particular part of the Constitution. And so they set aside a group to bring back a recommendation as to which ones of those existing authoritative interpretations are no longer relevant because they no longer are linked to the Constitution. That MRTI report uh, will be coming through the General Assembly Mission Council to the Assembly. Um, and this, as, as well, there will be a review, a report of a review of PPC and PILF. Uh, each one of the six agencies every six years on a rotating basis is reviewed, and as well as some standing committee reviews that come to this assembly. The final source of business are commissioners' resolutions. Uh, the Constitution and, the, uh, and our standing rules say that uh, commissioners themselves are able to bring new items of business before the assembly. They must come within the first 24 hours of the assembly itself, and there's certain limitations about what is appropriate. We don't consider amendments to the Constitution um, at the last minute or uh, bring up business that's already before the assembly. But these four sources of business provide the, the conversation that goes on at the assembly and provides the framework for how we will consider the work and ministry and the spirit and the life of the Presbyterian Church in the next few years. As you, as, this, as you come to the assembly, there will be several ways for you to engage in this business and these conversations. The first is what we call the Riverside Conversations. This is an opportunity before the assembly starts on Saturday morning for commissioners and advisory delegates to get together around certain topics of business. We try to identify five or six that um, are of special interest to people. It's a chance for some of the task forces and those people who represent those, um, those topics to give background information and to begin the conversations that will later lead to debate and action on the floor when we get to business. I hope that you will take advantage of the opportunity to be a part of the Riverside Conversations as a way to engage in the business before the assembly. All of the items of business, before they're considered on the floor of plenary by the whole group, are each referred to a specific committee of the assembly. This year, we're having a record number of committees at the assembly, as many of you know already. That's partly in order to make the assembly committees smaller, and also as a way for us to um, look to create committees that are small enough to consider carefully single topics or items of business. Um, but every item will be considered by these committees. The committees will report back to the assembly and they can take one of four different actions. They will recommend that the assembly um, concur with the um, action, um, or concur with amendment, or um, concur with a, with a substitute. They can uh, recommend that the assembly um, vote no to the action that is in the motion, that is in the overture or the businesses before them. Or they can suggest they voted no with amendment or comment. Um, the, the committee can suggest that they answer the, um, the, the business before them with another item of business. By, by acting in another way, they answer the item before them. And finally, they can refer the item. They can recommend that the body refer the item. The 20 committees uh, um, are different every year, uh, but they allow us to assign those items of business before the assembly happens. The General Assembly Procedures Committee handles things 
uh, to do with the Office of the General Assembly and the General Assembly itself. The Review Biennial Assemblies Committee will hear the report of the Biennial Review Committees and any business that's come to the Assembly related to that. The Mid-Council Issues Committee will hear the report of the Mid-Council uh, Commission and all of the overtures and other business in relation to that. Church polity deals with the uh, form of government, except in the areas of church orders and ministry and the ordination standards, which is handled by the next committee. Um, the uh, special committee of this assembly will hear the report of the review of authoritative interpretations and business associated with that. The Ecumenical Interface Relations Committee um, is involved with our relations with other denominations and with other faiths throughout the world. Mission coordination is primarily involved in the General Assembly Mission Council budget, some of its activities and its programs. Social justice issues, here's many of the reports of our social ju justice and advocacy groups. Immigration issues deals with those uh, items of business specific to the action of the last assembly and of our general concern with the Im immigration issues of our country and our world. Uh, civil union and marriage issues will be taking We'll, we'll deal with the overtures and the business that comes specific to that issue in the life of this church as we currently know it. Peacemaking and international issues deals with our relations across the world as peacemakers, except in the area of Middle East peacemaking issues, which has its own special committee again this year. Church growth and PILP will um, have focus a lot on the 1001's and one's and, uh, congregation or worshiping community initiative. Theological issues, institutions of Christian education deals with the seminaries, with broad uh, uh, work with the uh, directory of worship. The confessions of the church will hear the report of the Heidelberg Task Force and also an overture about Belhar. The review of GA permanent committees, here's those reports about reviews of the several permanent committees of the General Assembly that are reviewed on a regular rotational basis. The Board of Pensions, Foundation, and Publishing will deal with issues revol involving those three um, agencies and health issues with, a with issues of health and of, of, of the broader issues of, of abortion. Um, these committees together will do their work on, uh, on the Monday and Tuesday and prepare themselves for our work together in plenary. The third place to engage in the business of the, church, of the assembly is on Wednesday morning, something new. Um, as you, the members of the committees have been dealing with just the business before them, those committees are given the opportunity to come back together on Wednesday morning after their business is all done in preparation for when we gather on Wednesday afternoon in plenary to look at the business as it's being um, as, it, as, as it's being reported by the other committees. Um, a chance for discussion and congregate, uh, conversation and engagement with the issues with the people you're comfortable talking with, those folks who've been with you in committee for the previous two days. And finally, the plenary meetings, uh, which begin Wednesday afternoon, where all of these items of business will come back before the whole assembly and you will have an opportunity to engage, to debate, to vote, to amend, to refer, to, uh, to lift up, and to seek God's spirit and God's wisdom in the doing of the business of the assembly. These are, this is a broad view of the business that is before the assembly. Um, it's a broad view of how the business has come to us, and I hope it's been a helpful introduction for you in preparing yourself to be a part of this assembly. As you look at the business before you, it is very important that all commissioners and advisory delegates become thoroughly familiar with the business before the committees of which they're a part, but you also will want to have a broad general knowledge of all of the business uh, in its complexity. I uh, thank you for this opportunity to be a part of these webinars. I know there's one more next week that will be the, the final welcome. But on behalf of everybody at the Office of the General Assembly and especially meeting services, I want to say we look forward to seeing you very soon in Pittsburgh. Thank you.